Hey folks, I want to talk to you about a serious topic for a moment, and that's the legal challenges that professional reviewers can face when doing audio product reviews. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisello with Audioholics. So I've been wanting to do a video like this for a while. I just wasn't fully motivated until I found out what happened to Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner uh, over the last couple of days when he published a review of a loudspeaker from a company called Tecton. And I've always been mildly curious or intrigued about the brand because they have very unconventional designs. A lot of their products use a nested tweeter array, like a Bessel array, and they're pretty wide baffle designs. And the only reviews that I've seen were, were like on websites that were just fluff reviews. There were no objective facts. It was just all subjective flowery opinions. So I wasn't really sure what to think of the brand. So when Aaron published that review over the weekend, I was curious and I watched the video. And he did very thorough measurements on the product. And if you guys aren't familiar with Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner, he's a very prominent YouTube reviewer. He's invested considerable time, money, and effort into a clipple measurement system so he can consistently and accurately measure loudspeaker performance doing CTA 2034 measurement data reporting. So I think that's something that should be supported and commended. There's only a handful of reviewers left that are doing objective and consistent measurements of loudspeakers and amplifiers and audio components. Aaron being one of them, Amir from Audio Science Review, another uh, channel that, uh, that has a clipple measurement system. He does very detailed analysis of audio gear. Of course, we do very detailed analysis of, of loudspeakers and of audio gear as well and amplifiers. And then you got Stereophile and maybe one or two other, and that's it. So there's only maybe five or six major players out there objectively doing third-party verification in an accurate and consistent manner. And that's something that we should all support as a community. So when I hear of a company threatening litigation because they don't like how the results turned out or it wasn't in their favor, that's when I, I just don't like those bully tactics. And that's the crux of the reason why I'm doing this video to show support for Aaron and to show support for any reviewer that has faced stuff like this. And in fact, in our 25 year history of running Audioholics, I've been threatened by at least six manufacturers of litigation because they didn't like the results. One particular case, there was a subwoofer company that made a small compact sealed sub and we were going to do a CEA 2010 measurements on it. And they actually turned out pretty good for the sub for the form factor of what it was. But the owner of the company said, if we publish those measurements, he's going to sue us. And since I've been through this ringer with other companies in the past, I told the reviewer, you know what, send the product back. We're not going to publish any information on that company ever again. They're dead to us. I just don't want to deal with the drama because I've been through it. I've spent thousands on legal fees in the past, including most recently, just a couple of years ago, there was a cable company that was stalking and harassing me and they threatened to sue me while at the same time issued a, issued a gag order that I couldn't respond publicly or they would sue me. And it was not a pleasant experience. And I don't wish this on anybody. And I understand um, and I sympathize what Aaron is going through right now because it's very psychologically impactful to your life to, to be threatened like this. And basically, my understanding is the reason why the manufacturer wasn't happy with the review is because Aaron reviewed this product or he measured the product without the feet on the bottom of the cabinet. And I thought that's a little odd. But when I looked into it more detail, it sounded as if the threaded inserts that go into the cabinet go all the way through the cabinet. So there's actually holes in the cabinet. I've never heard of any speaker that, you, that drills holes entirely through the cabinet so you can install feet. I don't even understand why you would want that, to be honest with you, because it's acting like miniature ports. It's a lossy medium. Now, if that is the case, if those holes go all the way through the cabinet, it can have some impact, I would imagine, on impedance. You'll probably see some different results in the impedance if you seal those holes, but it's not going to be like a night and day difference from what I would imagine. And I am curious to see if Aaron does get the opportunity to remeasure that speaker. And that 
that's really what should have happened to begin with. I mean, in my opinion, the manufacturer should have went to Aaron and said, you know what? Uh, we don't agree with your measurements. We don't think they're accurate because you didn't set up the product properly. We'd like to give you the opportunity to provide you the feet, redo the measurements and publish a second video. That would have been great. There wouldn't have been any need for us to do this video. There wouldn't have been massive threads on Audio Science Review that brought attention to this, as well as the Audio Hawks forum. And even Youth Man did a video on it. So now there's like three major news outlets or websites that are covering this topic. And in my opinion, if Tecton goes this route and tries to sue Aaron and uses intimidation tactics against him to silence him, it's going to hurt them more than it's going to help them because they're already getting so much negative publicity for this. And in fact, as far as I'm concerned, I was somewhat intrigued and interested in reviewing some of their products. That company is dead to Audioholics as well. We will never cover a Tecton product. I don't like any company that uses bully tactics against reviewers or anybody in general. It just should, it just should not be tolerated. Bullying is not tolerated. I have zero tolerance for that. So, you know, one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to read to you guys. I was doing some research on this topic of free press and free speech and a couple of things that struck me uh, that I read about was Consumer Review Fairness Act, the CRFA. The Consumer Review Fairness Act of 2016 was enacted to protect consumers from unjust punishment or intimidation by businesses for posting honest reviews. According to the act, it is illegal for a company to use a contract provision which restricts a customer's ability to review a company's product services or conduct, impose a penalty fine or fee against a customer that gives a review, requires customers to relinquish the intellectual property rights in the review. Then we have the California anti-slap statute. And then the California anti-slap statute, it's, it stands for uh, strategic lawsuit against public participation. And these are laws are designed to provide relief to slap lawsuits. The statute helps prevent people or businesses from using unfound lawsuits, courts, or potential threats of a lawsuit to intimidate and silence customers or other people from exercising the right of petition of free speech under the First Amendment. Hence, if a reviewer is being sued for posting a bad review, they can file a petition requesting that the court dismisses a lawsuit on the basis that it lacks merit. So the types of defamation can be described as false or statement presented as fact that end up causing injury or damage to the reputation of a person, business, or entity. And defamation can take two forms, liable or slander. Liable refers to false or defamatory statements expressed through various mediums such as writing, pictures, signs, print, or any other physical form of communication. Slander, on the other hand, involves false or defamatory statements conveyed orally, typically through speech. Now, if you guys have seen Aaron's review of the Tecton speaker, I didn't see any cases of libel or slander. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but I didn't see Aaron at one particular point in his review say that this company is garbage, they're unethical. You know, I didn't see anything like that. I saw Aaron give his honest, educated opinion backed with objective measurements and facts. And if this company is going to try to throw this into a court and spend thousands on legal fees, they're going to lose. The court will likely dismiss this. And I don't want to see this happen to anybody. We've spent thousands in the past, you know, fighting off these companies that were threatening to sue us. And it's not fun. I don't wish this upon anybody. In fact, if you look back in the 80s, um, Bo sued Consumer Reports because Consumer Reports reviewed the 901s and they said that the sound was gigantic. The, the presentation of the instruments was gigantic and the sound wandered around the room. So Bose sued uh, for product disparagement and since they're a public figure, they had to prove Consumer Reports made statement with actual malice. They initially won that case until Consumer Reports appealed and got the ruling reversed. And that's really the crux of the situation is we have to come together as a community, whether we agree with each other or not, whether we have different opinions or not, and we have to stand up against companies that are doing this kind of tactic, that are trying to limit free speech, that are trying to limit us from providing you a free service to give you educated, informed opinions of audio products. And I'm just, 
I'm just feeling it for Aaron right now. I'm feeling it for any reviewer that has dealt with this. As far as I know, this is not a first offense for Tecton. They've done this to other reviewers. I think Amir from Audio Science Review has had issues with them. And I think um, Ron from New Record Day has had issues with them. So this is a company that's acting in bad behavior, in my opinion, and they, they should not be rewarded for that. So guys, um, the last point I want to mention on that, this is another reason why we always submit our test reports to the manufacturers before we actually publish. We try to avoid any um, discrepancies or, or any errors on our part, because there's been cases where we, we've measured something, like most recently, I measured a Yamaha amp that I had a prototype of, and it was not looking good on the audio precision. So I sent those measurements to Japan, to Yamaha. They sent me their measurements. They didn't match. They basically said my unit is defective and they're sending me a new one. Now this is gonna take me longer. It's gonna take me more effort. I have to redo the measurements. I can't publish right now, but it, it's a great way to avoid uh, publishing wrong information or not something that's product representative for the brand. And I'm happy to do this again. And I know there are other reviewers that do similar as as well and it's just a great way to always have peer review and fact check that's my engineering background that's everything i've done as an engineer has always been fact checking third party verification just to make sure that whatever we publish is the most accurate representation for that brand or product as possible so guys i want to also remind you that on april 18th we are having our 25th anniversary we've been online for 25 years yes i'm old Yes, I've been doing this a long time. Yes, time flies. So at 7 p.m. Eastern time on April 18th, we will be hosting a live stream event. It's going to be probably a two-hour event. We're giving away six prizes, some substantial prizes. To anyone, that's to anyone that's in the continental United States should register. I'll put the links down below for your chance to win. We're going to have Audioholic staff. They're going to be rekindling how they got involved in Audioholics how they were influenced by the content that we've been producing for 25 years. We're gonna have guests, manufacturer partners on, we're gonna have you know affiliate channel members. It's gonna be a fun time. And um, I hope you guys can all join and participate in this. And again, I wanna reiterate our support for Aaron at Aaron's Audio Corner and any audio print magazine, YouTube channel, editorial site that has dealt with these kind of tactics bullying tactics from manufacturers. In fact, if you are a member of the press and you have stories to share, please share them below about anything that's happened similar to you on this. So guys, I hope everything turns out okay for Aaron. We all have support for him. Please check out his channel. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics. And until next time, my friends, Keep listening.